Hello, law firm owners, and welcome to another episode of the Wildly Successful Law Firm Podcast. I'm Nermeen, your host, and we are still in productivity, time management, and efficiency season of this podcast. And today I'm going to share with you one of the things that I see as like one of the biggest faux pas in a lot of law firms. And trust me, I've worked with enough of them to know that this is a huge problem. You're probably wondering what it is. You've probably done it at some point yourself. But that problem is that you don't send your invoices out on time. So today I'm gonna share with you how you can actually automate your billing in your firm, no matter what kind of firm you have, okay? In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to collect money, how to invoice, how to get all of that done and how to do it so that it's a system. So that you're not just sitting here thinking, oh shit, did I bill this client? Oh crap, did I remember to do this? Like you you don't wanna do all of that kind of stuff. You want it to just kind of be in your head. You don't want it to live in your head. You wanna have it be a system. So before I get into how you can automate your firm's billing and get paid faster and collect on more of your invoices and not get stiffed, I would love it if you would take a minute to go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a review. It goes a really, really long way. And I know I take a lot of time to do these podcasts, to send out newsletters, to make sure that you are growing your law firm effectively. Please take two seconds and return the favor and do one of those things like comment, leave a review, share this podcast episode with someone who you know has a law firm. Okay, so now let's get into automating your billing. Let's talk a little bit about what the current process looks like. Let's say, for example, if you're just collecting a retainer from a client, right? You go into LawPay or Clio, you put their contact information in, you put their address in, you put their email in, then you put in whatever the line item is, it's an invoice for $1,500 as your retainer, $5,000, $10,000, whatever that number is, right? You're just collecting a retainer. You're going into LawPay or Clio and you're typing all this information in and then you go into your email to copy their email address. But wait, you go into your email and you see an email from a past client and you're like, oh, I have to respond to this because you don't scan your emails because you are doing the things that I told you not to do in episode one of this season. So you respond to that email and all of a sudden 10 minutes has gone by and you didn't send out that retainer. Then you go back to Clio to get that email address in and you're like, wait, what was I doing? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was getting their email address. Okay, yeah, so let me go put their email address into their invoice so I can send it off to them. And just as you're about to finish sending out that invoice, you have your admin walks in or you get a call from a client or you get an appointment reminder, Ding ding you have lunch or you have a doctor's appointment or you get a text from your kid's school. I see this all the time, y'all. This is why I have such specific examples for this. That invoice doesn't get sent. You now, we're going to send this retainer to a client. You were gonna get paid and you didn't send it. That's one day gone that you didn't send it. Then you come in the next day and you're like, you go to bed that night and you're like, okay, I gotta get that, I gotta get that retainer out the next day. It's the first thing I'm gonna do. You get to your office and there's a client fire that you have to put out. Now it's noon and you still haven't sent out this invoice, right? And keep in mind, when you send out an invoice, it doesn't mean that you get paid as soon as it gets sent because the client still has to receive it, they have to look over it, then they have to click on the pay now button, then they have to put their card information in, then they have to hit send, right? It's a whole thing that's happening. It's not just the shit on your side, it's the shit on their side, right? There's this constant like tension between these two things and as we've gone to a more virtual world, which means you don't have a client consult where they're sitting across of you and they're saying, okay, here's the problem, here's what I need to resolve. And you say, okay, that'll be $3,000 for your retainer. And you take that check that day. We don't do business like that anymore, right? Most firms have now gone to where they send an online invoice. They send something through email. They send a link through text. 
right? As this has happened, it's made it a little bit more challenging for law firm owners to get paid immediately. So what we're gonna talk about today is how you get into this habit of automated billing and automated invoicing. Now, I am gonna share with you all a video for you to see how I send out my invoices and how it's literally three clicks and done. I'll also share with you how I do that same process for my clients, whether they're collecting an invoice or they're collecting a retainer and what the flow looks like for each of those things. I'm gonna share with you a video on that so that you can see, is this something that you want to make your life easier? I talk to attorneys who are still the ones who are drafting their own client agreements and their own client contracts. You may only have 50, 70, 40 clients a year, but that admin process is one of the things that can actually be automated. So I fully believe that if it can be automated, you shouldn't be the one to do it. You should be the one who's out there drafting up their agreement, doing the actual legal work. You shouldn't be doing the admin work of collecting money. It should literally be two clicks and done. All right, so let me tell you some other things that you need to think about when you're automating your firm's billing. So number one, when you have a new client, you want to make sure that you are collecting the retainer before you do any legal work. I know that there are a lot of old school law firms out there who are like, well, I do the work and then I bill. I understand that, but we're also in 2022 and there's a recession and inflation has gone insane. There's no reason that you should be billing after the fact. It's literally like going to Starbucks and saying, you know what, I owe you. Thanks for the coffee. Once the caffeine kicks in, I'll be sure to send money via Venmo. <laughs> what? Why would you do that? That's insane. Medical practices get paid for procedures before they do the procedure. You need to get into that same mentality and that same habit, okay? So I want you to think about this. When you send a retainer to a client, they're signing your client engagement agreement. Okay, so as soon as they say, yes, I wanna hire you, in two clicks, they should get a contract to their email. They then need to sign that contract. Then as soon as they sign that contract, that immediate next step needs to be here's an invoice for your retainer. And the retainer amount can be whatever you want it to be. All this can be customized. And when they get that retainer, they then get another email that says, ha, ah, here, you've been sent an invoice for a retainer. Please pay this amount right now. They go through and they pay, and then you get a notification that not only have they signed a contract and officially become a client of your law firm, yay, but also that they have now paid the retainer. Yay, double yay, which means you can start working on that case file. You know that that money is gonna come in, it's gonna get deposited to you, and you also know that it's gonna hit your account in three to five days. So when we talk about things from a cash flow perspective and you're just doing these retainers and getting paid, it's really nice because it keeps the business flowing, okay? Hey, Law Firm Owners, just a quick note here. If you haven't already scheduled a time with me to talk to me about automating your law firm, I want you to go ahead, pause this video, click on the link below and automate your law firm with me. We're gonna get on a consult call. We're gonna see if it's right for you. And if it's right for you, then I will send you an invoice all automatically so you can see how my process works behind the scene and how we can set everything up for you so that everything is two clicks and done in your practice. So go ahead, schedule the consult, and I will talk to you then. Now back to the episode. All right, number two. When you are choosing to collect payments online, 99% of law firms are collecting payments online. You should be paying your bills online. You can choose whether or not you want your clients to pay you via ACH or via credit card, right? Those are the two options that are commonly available, but it depends on which platform you choose. Stripe sometimes doesn't allow that. FreshBooks does allow that. 
QuickBooks does allow that. Square sometimes allows that. So it depends on who your payment processor is and how you want to get paid. Most law firms I know go through LawPay. You got to read the, the small print on LawPay. You got to know what you're actually paying when it comes to that. So when it comes to choosing your payment processor, you do have 100% flexibility in ACH or credit card. I know a lot of firms like to avoid credit card and so they only allow for ACH. That's fine, right? You just have to make sure that whatever platform you're using, Stripe, Square, LawPay, whatever, allows for that to happen. For most people, it feels like something really big to have to choose. So you know what they do? They just go with the one that their practice, um, they go with the one that their legal practice management provides to them. So Clio, I think is now connected with LawPay or is that my case? Anyway, they just go with the one that's connected from their practice management software and they're not really thinking about, okay, well, is this the best option for me, right? Because if you are collecting 300,000 a year in credit card fees, oh my goodness, you're paying a lot in fees, okay? And you can very easily maximize sometimes seven, 10, $15,000 every year by just choosing a different processor, by not going through the one that's in your legal practice management software, which is trash anyway. So something to keep in mind as you are going through and thinking about automating your billing. How much are you gonna be paying in fees? All right, next thing. I know a lot of attorneys are moving to the evergreen retainer, which is basically that your retainer amount gets upped every single month. So the client leaves a card on file, you charge 3,500, 5,000 every single month, and you work against that amount collected. I personally think that that is the way that business should be done. You should not be getting paid after the fact because too often where there isn't an evergreen retainer, I see attorneys going back and adjusting their bills, adjusting their invoices, especially the smaller ones who are like, oh, well, I guess I worked for 30 minutes, but I can just do that for free because the client's complaining. Or, oof, this bill is really big and it's been $5,000 for the last two months and I feel like the client's gonna freak out. So, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna send such a big invoice out. I'm gonna go ahead and discount it. By having that evergreen retainer in place, the benefit, the biggest benefit is that you're going to be able to invoice for the right amount without having to negotiate with yourself. Is the client actually gonna pay for this? So if you don't have evergreen retainers, you should. And the processor that you use can go ahead and just automatically charge that amount at the beginning of the month, every single month, so that you get paid when you need to without having to chase around invoices, without having to say, hey, I did all this work, can you pay me? No, I'm mad, you didn't tell me it was gonna be this. Whatever else that conversation becomes between you and your client, right? Okay, so let's talk about the next benefit of automating your billing. Let's say, for example, that you are an immigration attorney and you get paid in two payments, typically. One is before the application is filed, all of the work that you're doing, all of the documents you're collecting, all of the questions that you're asking the client, all of the questions you're answering on this application, all of that sort of front-loaded work. You get paid for that before you start it. Then let's say you get paid again after 60 days, typically, and before the filing of the application. Now, if that's how your firm is set up, it's possible to set automated payments up in that exact same way where the card is maintained on file, you go through, you check a box and you say, yep, we've completed the second part. We're gonna go ahead and charge that account. So it is possible to get paid in recurring. It's possible to get paid once. It's, it's possible to get paid uh, in two split payments or four split payments, whatever that is for your firm. I want you to know that there's a lot of possibilities because technology and credit card processing and ACH processing has come 
really, really fucking far, okay? You're not just sitting in your office waiting for checks to come in the mail. You can get paid while you're out on the road, when you're in court, you just get a nice little notification on your phone saying, voila, so-and-so has paid you. So it's just a much better way of running your practice and it really does make things more seamless without having to remember oh yeah, I have to invoice for that. And, oh, did that invoice go out? And it's like, you've already got 700 things in your brain that for you to have to remember one more thing is gonna be the thing that completely exhausts you. So don't do that to yourself. Give yourself an opportunity to win here and set your billing up in a way that it's gonna work for you and that allows you to get paid for the work that you actually did for your clients, right? Okay, here's the next most important and final thing that I'm gonna say about your billing. You want it to be reliable. You know who's not reliable? You are not reliable because you're remembering 700 things along with having to get milk before you go home and pick up the kid's costume and get the dry cleaning you're not reliable. You know who else isn't reliable? Your admin is not reliable because your admin has to remember to send out the real nice eye hearing and has to send out the uh, invoice for the court reporter and has to do this and has to do the, this other thing and oh, order toner for the office and get lunch ready for the deposition on Friday. Your admin is not gonna remember all of these things. Not reliable. What you want is you want a system that is reliable for your business. And you want to make sure that if you forget, if your admin forgets the system that is controlled by technology and fortunately not us humans doesn't forget that the system works. All of my clients get set up on GoCardless. It is what I use in my practice. They have set payments that are pulled out of their accounts every single month or bi-monthly or for the three month plan or the six month plan, whatever that is, right? That gets done automatically. Me, my team, my CFO, we never have to collect checks or invoices or send the invoice or adjust an invoice because we have a system and that system is fucking 100% reliable. And if you are still manually doing your invoices, I really want you to consider embracing the technology. I really want you to think about all of the benefits that come with having a technology system and not to focus on the one time that something bad is gonna happen. Because as a technologist, as a strategist, my goal is to create technology solutions for 80%. Now, what does that mean, 80%? What that basically means is that there are going to be exceptions to the rule. I have exceptions to the rule, right? Where I might be working with a new law firm owner or a newer law firm owner. I might be working with a newer mom. I might be working with someone who's got a different situation or someone who's running their law firm that's really more of a nonprofit, and I might just wanna help them. So maybe I charge them something different, but I still do it through my system. My system doesn't fail. And her situation might be a 10% sort of exception to the rule. That happens, but we wanna create technology solutions for what's gonna happen 80% of the time. 80% of the time, you charge your clients the same amount of money every time. That is the thing that I really, really want you to remember here. So all of that being said, if you haven't already had a conversation with me about automating your law firm, you definitely should. The link is below. Let's talk about what we can do to automate the things in your practice. If you haven't already, please take a few minutes to like, subscribe, share, and comment. It goes a really, really long way and I really appreciate you taking the time, continuing to listen to this podcast, continuing to want to be more efficient and be more productive and work on your law firm, not just in your law firm. Okay, that's everything for this episode, my friends. I will see you next week. Thank you. Bye.